Hello, this is Joe Neville, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the latest version of Ubuntu 18.04 LTS as a guest VM on Windows 10. Let's jump right into it then. So get over to Ubuntu.com and hit the download 18.04 now. Then I'm going to go for the desktop. So we hit this Ubuntu desktop link, then the green button, it asks you to donate some cash not going to do that thank you for downloading okay I've already downloaded it to save time so what I will do is I will show you the version of Windows I'm running so it's Windows 10 version 1803 which is the latest version I believe and here is my virtual box this virtual box is also the latest version it is 5.2.8 okay so we hit new I'm going to call this for dash one select Linux okay give it a bit more create I'll give it some extra I'll give it 20 for the hard drive create that good stuff now hit settings and we'll go to shared clipboard and drag and drop that's fine move that right now on to system okay what do I need processor I'm gonna up the processor there there's a lot of pro this is a powerful laptop I've got eight CPUs on this one so I'm gonna use two for this VM and the next important thing is storage so go to the controller ID because this is where you want to add in the I say that we've downloaded so there's the d download which you should have downloaded beforehand open that up okay and all the rest of the settings I'm gonna leave as defaults sometimes I touch the network but I'm not going to for this one okay then we just hit start full screen that one okay starting up when there's a pause I'm gonna jump ahead without announcing it to speed the process up so you don't have to watch a blank screen so here we are install Ubuntu yep. English UK continue Okay, now this is interesting. What apps would you like to install to start with? So this is new for this version of Ubuntu. You've got a normal installation, which is web browser, utilities. It's got the office software, games, and media players. Or you can go for this minimal installation, which I really like this idea. So it's not, uh, a lot of the time I end up removing the LibreOffice stuff and the games and Rivenbox, etc., because I don't use it. I use this VM mainly for Python development, writing code against rest apis so i don't need a full office suite i've got my windows 10 underneath which has got all the office 365 stuff so i think this is a great idea now one of the things about this minimal installation though is that it's still a big image so from your download it's still 1.8 gig there's not a minimal installation image but it does speed things up and obviously it means in the future you won't have to do updates for things that you don't really need like updates to for LibreOffice if you don't use that stuff so I think this is a great one this is what I'm gonna go for we're gonna leave these other download updates while installing Ubuntu saves time yeah we'll go for that as I said I'll skip forward if there's any uh, long pauses or delays and install third-party software now I'm gonna leave that for now because I'm not doing any media okay uh, this is currently kind of not detected because it's a VM fine erase disk and install Ubuntu so that's the one I'm gonna go for install now okay that's fine all the partitioning just going with the defaults I'm in London correct put in the name this is just for lab work now it's copying the files across
shows you this a few highlights it's real kind of desktopy stuff though music and photos not the kind of thing that I'll be using this for so what I'm going to do is I will skip ahead and come back once it is installed now the installation is complete it's saying I need to restart the computer so I'll hit the restart now button please remove the installation media fine hit enter okay so it's rebooting now Here's the login screen then. And here it is, the latest Ubuntu desktop. Now, if you're coming from the previous LTS version of Ubuntu 16.04, I'm sure things will be looking very different to you. Now, that's because last year, Canonical ditched their own Unity desktop, which 16.04 was running on, and they went with the GNOME desktop. So that's what we have now. And this is the first version of Ubuntu LTS that is running this GNOME desktop. Okay, now this is why we've got this pop-up here which explains some of the differences to you. So you can see here you've got things like Windows Switcher, Launcher Apps button, Application Menu, Clock and Calendar at the top, System Menu and the Close button. Now this is, doesn't seem like much but that's a big change from Unity that the Close button is now on the window and it's not top left. Okay, so let's skip through this. Next, it's talking about Live Patch not concerned with that at the moment help improve ubuntu yeah fine you can choose to if you want to you're ready to go brilliant hit done now let's have a proper look around this then if you haven't played around with a gnome desktop what you've got this is the minimal install uh, remember so what we have is the sidebar here which doesn't have all of the um buttons that you would if you had the full install i tend to remove these anyway clean that up okay what you want to do if you want to launch the application you've got this button down here the show applications bottom left so we can hit that and there you get your applications that are installed now if we close that down we've got the calendar here is in the middle so you can hit that and you get notifications come up if you've got software updates etc that will appear there now this is interesting over here these are the stats for our network volume power so if you hit that arrow there you'll get into it's a quick way of getting into network user battery as i said hit the spanner and then you'll go to settings and there's quite a lot of settings in here now we can scroll down to details and you'll see right 1804 and we're running 3.8 sorry 3.28.1 fine close that down so what else can we do well obviously new os you're going to get new backgrounds so let's have a look at those hit the backgrounds now it's got the pretty pictures of course uh, there's some geometric shapes some of these really remind me of windows kind of uh, photos some of them are a bit strange like this one which is some water on some planks by the on some decking by the looks one and this is my personal favorite very very solemn background there I call this one puddle um, not not really gonna brighten your day I don't think if you're logging in uh, you know on a rainy Monday morning back into work and you're presented with this I don't know what that's gonna do to your uh, mood it certainly wouldn't lift mine another interesting <laughs> one that we've got is uh, this one which is absolutely crazy I don't know why this is in there or who would uh, pick this one as a background you can't actually see uh, the icons or anything very well with that, so that's kind of ridiculous, I think. Let's get rid of that. Um, what are, uh, let's go for the standard one here. Select that. Excellent. Right, so what else is of interest? Well, 
if you're someone that likes to play around with things and you like to customize it because one of the criticisms of gnome in general is that there's not much customization of the setup of the actual desktop so you can do a few things though you can change the icon size you see that top left you can make them bigger and smaller you can change the position i don't know why you'd want to do any of this stuff auto hide i hate things like that don't really bother with any of those things interesting for networkers like myself is the network section so it's pretty self-explanatory you hit the cog there and you get your network set up you can put in statics uh, IPv6 and you can see security setup your dot one X fine um, the other things are all oh, monitor there you can set up your monitor change the resolution and night light so if you're working um, at night and you don't want too much uh, you want to try to prevent eye strain you can turn on this night light feature you which you see on a lot of OS's nowadays so we can turn that on you can set the time sunrise to sunset so that will obviously be using the system clock to work that one out okay fine set that one set that up now what else would I normally do well a lot of the time as I mentioned earlier I'm working on Python so we should go over to because this is quite nice about uh, about Ubuntu if you go I use the IDE of PyCharm so if you go over to PyCharm hit download now what you get now you get this message here saying if you're using Ubuntu you can install PyCharm as a snap so you don't have to do the standard install you can use the canonicals uh, snaps so let's give that a go I'll go for the free version and it is dash community classic and I'll let that uh, I'll let that download then if a snap is available for an application you want to install it is a really convenient way of installing it look a bit like an apt package because all I had to do was enter this command I've jumped ahead and as you can see it's actually downloaded and installed PyCharm for me so if I go bottom left hit that there you see PyCharm already installed that's the fresh install of Ubuntu 18.04 then. I've also performed an upgrade from 17.10, the previous version of Ubuntu, to 18.04 using the automated process, and that went fine. Now, if you're running 16.04, the latest information I've got is that you can't use an auto process to upgrade until the incremental release of 18.04, so 18. 04.1 is released in the future so you won't be able to go from 16.04 straight to 18.04 for a while but that's it for now i hope you found that useful please do like comment share and subscribe if you've got any suggestions for future videos please do leave a message in the comments we're always looking for suggestions for future content and trying to give back to the community but it's Friday evening, I need to log off. My name's Joe Neville, thanks for watching and goodbye.